Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's have a little review of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 2. This is probably the least understood part of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus. But once we get our heads wrapped around, it's the easiest to use. Before we get to what the actual theorem says, Part 2, we have to recall that differentiation undoes integration. So if I have this, and we, we learned this even before our formal discussion of the fundamental theorem of calculus, we there were some problems that we discovered that if I differentiate this integral, I'm going to end up where I started. So this, this operation here of differentiation undoes this operation here. And now both of these variables would denote integration. So I have this operation here, which denotes differentiation, this operation here that denotes integration, and differentiation undoes integration. So if I differentiate the integral of f of x dx, I end up with f of x. That actually is the fundamental theorem of calculus. The formal fundamental theorem of calculus, part two, by the way, this is, this is FTC part two. Doesn't matter what part, we just need to understand how to use it. Okay, and this is in our, I believe this is in our text page, I believe it's page 83 in our interactive textbook there, which says if I differentiate this, this integral, this definite integral, well, it's not really a definite integral, from a to x of f of t, 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 that equals f of x. So what has to happen is I have to have a constant down here as the lower limit, and this is my variable in this, x. These are the variables that match up. I'm differentiating with respect to x of this guy right here. And this is just that integrand, f of t. And so this is the integral from a to x of f of t dt. What does that, if I differentiate that, what does it equal? It just equals f of x. And there's a more complete discussion of this particular topic in our textbook. So if I have this function, here's a nice example. If I have this function y is equal to the integral from 7 to x of this, this creature here, this integrand that's in terms of t, 1 plus t divided by 1 plus t squared dt, that, and if I ask, say, hey, what is dy dx? By the fundamental theorem of calculus, that's just 1 plus x over 1 plus x squared. All I do is take the x and put it right in here because I'm differentiating this. So if you look at this as differentiation, I'm going to differentiate this side with respect to x. And I'm going to differentiate this side with respect to x. Okay, and what happens? This differentiation undoes this integration. But I want this thing in terms of x, so I'm just going to put x in where the t is. So that's very simple. When do we use that? We use that a lot in these accumulation functions that we come across. If I have this function, this is a lot. We see these types of, say I have negative 1 to x of some integrand there in terms of t. And the way this comes up on our AP uh, free response questions, what they'll do is they'll have a They'll have some type of function of t here. And they'll say, hey, g of x is this accumulation function that starts at 1. And this, of course, is going to be f of t here. This graph is y is equal to f of t. But my function is this accumulation function g of x. Now this is the t axes, but then x is a subset of the t axes. And so my function g of x is the definite integral from 1 to some variable of x under this graph f of t or above it, whatever. And then they say, hey, hey, here's this accumulation function. And then right away they say, hey, you know what? What's g prime? And we've done a lot of these problems. G prime is just f of x. Why? Because of the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. And that's why. 
And those, so these types of problems come up a lot on free response questions. And then you can evaluate, then you can look at G prime. What you're looking at here is Y is equal to F of T, but you're really looking at G prime of X is the, is the graph that you're looking at. And then you can say, hey, when is G prime positive? When is G prime negative? When does G prime cross the X axis? So we'll, we'll have some problems similar to that down the road as well. Okay, so the second little discussion about this, and you know, I can create this composite function y, which is the definite integral from 5 to 3x squared of t sine of t dt, and I can say, hey, what is dy dx? Well, if I have a composite function, keep in mind this is the inside. What is the derivative of a composite function? If I have this guy right over here, I'm going to slide him on over here. If I have this g of f of x, if I have this composite function, well, what's h prime? h prime, by the chain rule, is the derivative of the outside at the inside, oh, times the derivative of the inside. So this is just the chain rule here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the chain rule to find dy dx. Because the outside is this accumulation thing from 5 to this variable here. And so this part right here, g prime of f of x, is simply going to be 3x squared sine of 3x squared, but what I have to do, I now I have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. And what is the derivative of the inside? Well, the derivative of the inside is 3x squared. The derivative of that is going to be 6x. So dy dx, and I could simplify this, is going to be 18x cubed sine of 3x squared. So Easy if you understand the fundamental theorem of calculus. Impossible if you don't understand the fundamental theorem of calculus. On this particular problem, also, you're going to need the chain rule. So there's a couple uh, examples of using the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. And I will bid you farewell.